Good evening, everyone. Will you guys stand with us? So blessed to be in the house of the Lord. Let's go before him in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for, for just everything that you've done on the cross, Lord Jesus. We thank you that the greatest day in history that you thought of us and you died for us, Lord Jesus. You spilled your blood for us so that we could have eternal communion with you, Lord. We just love you and we honor you, God. We just lay everything that's been going on during the week at your feet. We just come and surrender and worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory. Let's put our hands together.
Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior.
there is still power in His work, in His redeeming work. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
a better word it speaks life it speaks to your worth you are so precious so precious to the Lord we are his children and his blood speaks a covering and a promise that is greater than anything we could ever hope or imagine we thank you Jesus we thank you, God, for your promise. We thank you, God, for our worth that is made new in you, Jesus, that we are priests and priestesses, kings and queens. We have a royal bloodline because of you, Jesus. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name. As we sing this next song, I just want us to know how important it is to know that God has already healed us. The Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Not we will be, we are already healed. So no matter what part of your life needs healing, it could be your body, your finances, your relationship, Whatever it is, just sing the song and believe that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed.
thank you for healing God. Thank you, Jesus. You hold my every moment. You calm my rage and see.
worship the Lord tonight. Praise his name. Praise his name. Wow. I'll tell you. When I first came in, there was people out there. Y'all can be seated. There was people out there in the vestibule. And it was fun. I liked it. And then when I came in here, there was something about coming inside those doors right there. And I started visiting with different people. Somebody said, Bill, how are you tonight? I said, well, actually, I'm awesome. And I said, really? I said, well, you know, sometimes I really am 76. Really. So I'm not always awesome. Awesome. Other times, I'm just Bill Johnson. Which, you know, depending on your attitude and the, whose eyes you're looking through, that just means different things. But we were singing tonight. I like to make you laugh if I can. When we were singing tonight, and we were singing the words that says, He can move the mountains. And I thought, you know what? I just felt like God come down and spoke to me right there, standing there. And he says, not only that, Jesus said, I told you that with the faith just the size of a mustard seed, you can do the same thing. We're always saying, Jesus, move that mountain. Jesus, move that mountain. And I got a feeling he's sitting there, standing there, however he wants to be. He said, how come you're not doing it? How come you're not? Anyway, I didn't, take that for what it's worth, you know. We, we have the word. We was the, the power singing Jesus speaks a better word. We, through the power of the Holy Spirit, have Jesus inside of us. And we can speak a better word. We have victory over all of those chains that was falling off we was talking about, singing about tonight. You give me too much sermon stuff here. Anyway, <laughs> material. <laughs> but I tell you, I am just excited about the day that we're in right now. It may not look like it around the world, but great things are fixing to happen. Great things are fixing to happen because we have a God that's sitting on a throne and He loves us. Woo! Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we do have some praise reports. Or a, well, no, two praise reports. Uh, Drew and Tracy Hunger's uh, son, Stratton, was in a motorcycle accident last week, and he had surgery on his femur, and he's doing well. They are very thankful there was no head, neck, or back injuries. When you fall off of a motorcycle, it's pretty serious. God was with him. And then we prayed for Jeff Churchill, and he went back to work. God is awesome, people. When I said I was awesome tonight, of course, that was partly me, but... It was because I knew I had Jesus in me, you know? That's just like you, 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 every one of you are awesome in Jesus, right? Amen. I just like to say it louder than some. But God is so good to us. Ennis asked that we pray, his, pray for his brother-in-law, Daniel Salazar. He's battling COVID. Lately, I like to say, who's not? Don't be... <laughs> But I mean, God is in control of this COVID thing. Somebody last night on the prayer Zoom, they, they didn't, I think it was Josh, he wouldn't even mention that name. <laughs> he just said, that thing, or something like that. And I thought, that's cool, Josh. I like that. <laughs> Don't give the devil credit for anything. Don't give him credit for anything, that, especially if we're helping it along <laughs> by our fear. Don't be afraid. God is in control. Amen. So we need to pray for Daniel Salazar. Uh, my son has a, 
second job interview tomorrow morning with that uh, same company that he interviewed with last week. He said all prayers are appreciated. And I also would ask that you continue to pray for his health. He is ever so slightly better than what he was, but he's still almost, he can't get around. Not enough strength to get up, hardly ever. Just enough to get up and go down the hall to the little door on the right. So pray for that God would give him the strength that, of, of Samson. Amen. Uh, Lord Kirschblom requested prayer for Heather's ex-husband, Ryan. Uh, his wife uh, committed suicide right in front of him. So it was, that has to be, you know, the family is pretty sh shaken up and uh, traumatized. And right now he doesn't think he believes in God, but I promise you, he will. He will. God will see that this is his turning point. Uh, I saw a while ago when I turned on the, the stream, and I just saw just before I got there, it said that my daughter Michelle has had a migraine headache all day long. Says so she worked with the lights out today, and then she says, good night, I'm going to bed. Pray that God heals her body in the name of Jesus. Teresa Laura's Aunt Evelyn was uh, diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. It has spread to her lungs. She needs a supernatural healing. I don't know what other kind there is. God will give it to her. Pat Graham asked prayer for Brian. Uh, I'm not going to try to say it. It starts with the M. It's close enough. Who's in the hospital with that uh, unmentionable name. Has to have high blood pressure and is a diabetic. diabetic. God, if he hasn't already healed him, he's in the process of healing him right now. Tracy Stevens asked for prayer for Wiley's son. He's been taking anti antibiotics for an infection in his elbow, and it just kept getting way worse. So he went to the ER. Pray this infection goes away. Amen. Uh, Brooke Mulder, Charlie Mulder's, Mulder's daughter, is she still on or was on? Like, she was on. Life support. I think we forgot to add is or was on there. She was on life support. Now she's improving. Uh, she, uh, Charlie can talk to her. She's coherent. She is able to talk. Uh, my understanding is she has no kidneys. She's on continuous dialysis. Uh, she needs to be healed completely. God can make new kidneys. Hey, he made us, right? Nothing like Nothing to it for him to make a new kidney. So we need to pray for her. And then Fabian come up a while ago. And you know, I knew that his son wanted to be a police officer, but I wasn't, I wasn't really aware that he is. But Fabian would like for us to pray for the HPD officers that are on patrol and, and keeping us safe out there. And, I, and of course, I just want to expand that just for all police workers, police officers. They're... You know, there's people out there that thinks it's fun to kill them, shoot them, and that's not good. God doesn't like that. I don't like that, and I know y'all don't. Let's stand up and pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. I am so happy, God, to be in front of you and be able to come to you without, without reservation, Lord. We learned last Sunday when that veil was rent in two. We are, heaven is wide open to us. We have every right to come to you, Lord. And you are our standard bearer. You are the one that takes care of us. You are the one that is our healer. You are our savior. You're our provider. And Father, we thank you, God, for these uh, praise reports that we had tonight. And God, I pray, God, for Daniel Salazar that you would heal his body completely make him whole. I pray for Jay, my son, that the job interview over the phone in the morning goes wonderful. And God, I pray God that you would continue to touch his body and I ask for him to have the strength of Samson, Lord. Not just a little bit. He's a big guy. He can be really strong. 
God, I pray, God, that you would just totally, completely heal him. I pray for the Heather's ex-husband, Ryan, and that his second wife just committed suicide right in front of him. God, help him op open his eyes, Lord, that you truly are his Savior. Give him comfort. Give that whole family comfort, Lord. But, Lord, let this be a turning point for Ryan and all the ones that are affected by this. And, Lord, I pray, God, for Michelle, that you would heal her of her migraine headache, heal uh, Teresa, Laura's, and Evelyn. It, stage 4 colon cancer does not mean a thing to you, God. You, it's just like saying she's got a bad cold. You can heal it no problem. God, I pray for uh, this Brian M. that Pat Graham has requested prayer. And he also has that COVID. Father, that a virus means nothing to you. You can take care of it. And I pray for uh, Wiley Stevens' son, that the infection in his leg, in his elbow, would just be completely eradicated and it would go away. And Lord, for Brooke Mulder, who's, on, who's been on life support, and it's getting better, but she con has continuous dialysis. Lord, I pray, God, that she would be healed, that her kidneys that she doesn't have would operate per perfectly, Lord. Give her brand new kidneys, Lord. I know you're capable, God. And Father, uh, for, for Fabian, his son, for all the HPD officers and all the PD officers all over the country, Lord, God, we pray for their safety, Lord. We pray that you give them wisdom, Lord. Wrap a hedge around them, Father. And Lord, as the, the uh, riots go on in different places and the quote-unquote protests, Lord, Father, that you would just keep them safe. And Lord, I pray, God, uh, it was my turn to pray for the election last night on the Zoom. Lord, I feel like I should do it one more time. Father, I pray, God, that you would have your will that the people of this country would vote with the conviction of what the Bible says, with the conviction of what the Bible says, with the word, with a word, with a capital W. Lord, we just thank you, God, and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Say amen to that. Amen. 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 It's offering time. If you need an offering envelope, just raise your hand. Us would be glad to give you one. Those of you who are giving online, use our church website and app in your giving tonight. Just want to share a couple of scriptures with you as you prepare your offering. Streets of gold, mansions, eternal life, endless worship. Those are the things that God is for. For those who don't like abundance, they're not going to like heaven very much because that's what it is in heaven. And how many of y'all know God wants what goes on in heaven to go on in earth as far as his children are concerned? A couple of scriptures I want to kind of share with you. Very familiar scriptures, but I want you to get the sense of the heart of God and the will of God for us here on the earth. Psalms 23 says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup, it runs over. I said, my cup runs over. That's the will of God. David wrote it, David understood it, that the cup of the anointing and the blessings of God are supposed to run over in the child of God's life. Jesus put it this way in the sixth chapter of uh, Luke. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? I don't want to get happy in the hill, but I'm here to tell you, that's the will of God for you. That's the will of God for me. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to receive that tonight. I want my inheritance. I want everything that the cross has bought for me. And if you believe that tonight you stand we'll make this confession we'll say it from our hearts 
God will hear it. Lord, I worship you with my tithe and my offering. I thank you for bringing me out of bondage into blessings. I believe I am now free from poverty and lack. Everything that I put my hands to prospers. Satan, take your hands off my finances. Lord, let the ministering spirits be released. Let them gather in my harvest now. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you in your giving tonight. Lord. Thank you, Lord. I feel like tonight... I'm preaching for the first time to my church. <laughs> I don't know why I've got the jitters, but my message tonight is actually to the church. And it's about the church. Because the church is the bride of Christ. And I know there's a lot of people going to be listening in to hear this message. And I go to a lot of places and minister and at these various denominations and churches. There's all kinds of stuff everywhere. And so this is to everyone straight from the Word of God. And so I just pray that the Holy Spirit will empower me to let Marilyn step aside and let your spirit come through. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit takes control of everything that I speak and that you never be condemned by the Word of God because you are free from condemnation. And I thank you, Lord, that we all have a teachable spirit and that we're open to the conviction of the Holy Spirit and that all lying spirits are bound and cast out. Anything that's speaking to you that's not of the Lord and that we're delivered from all the self-righteousness, and we are free. Not only are we free, we're sanctified, righteous, and holy, and set apart for His work. And our hearts are open to be receptive to His Spirit and His Spirit. And may the Holy Ghost have His way in our hearts and minds, ears and eyes. Because I feel like that the Holy Spirit is speaking to the body of Christ this day and season, because it seems like in the last 25 years, more than anything, I'm normally speaking on uh, churches or uh, denominations or whatever they are. Um, and I don't want to degrade anybody because everybody has their own belief system. And that's why the Lord, I think, gave us so many scriptures that we be in unity and one accord and we all have the same uh, vision. And that's partly why pastor has opened up the Sunday school classes so that we make sure that we're all on the same page and we're all believing the same way because if we're not we can cause things to happen in the, in ourselves and in our church in Hebrews 10:23 to 25 it says let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering for he who has promised is faithful and let us not consider one another, uh, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Um, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. We see a day approaching where people are trying to get away from staying together in the church. And that just cannot be because the more you stay away from the church, the more you'll fall away into your own ways. And when your own ways are leading you astray, that does nothing good for you. And uh, so we need to get back to into the church and support the church, support the body of Christ, support those that are going out, support those missionaries that are out there that are working in the fields. And uh, it says in 1 Corinthians 10:21. You cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. And you cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. And golly, there's people coming into the church that think they can live any way they want to. That they could do this and they can do that. And the Lord says, no. You must draw a line in the sand and cross over and make a decision that you're going to live for Christ. And you're not going to partake of these other ways and walk away from those areas. 
uh, in 2 Corinthians 6, 16 to 18, it talks about come out from among them and be ye separate. If we're not separate, different from the world, why would the world want to change and be like us? So if they see us falling away and not doing anything for the Lord or living the Christ-like, uh, they, they're judging us. And rightfully so. They're, they're judging us, what they're saying. Um, in Ephesians 4.31, it says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. And it talks about in Hebrews 12.15 about a root of bitterness. It talks, it says, let, not, <clears throat> let God reveal it. If you have any resentments, grudges, offenses, disappointments, hurts generated in your heart or there's any hostility, renounce them and rebuke them and you can be free. We want to eradicate all, all evil spirits from, of unforgiving spirits that have been released in these days. The negativity and the cruel attitudes. Um, <clears throat> these thoughts are in the minds from the enemy. He implants them. There's so much out there on the news and on, on television and podcasts and uh, news feeds that is so negative and it's so full of spirits that are just critical. And the body of Christ is picking up some of that. And so we've got to stand strong against those things and pray continuously that we be free from those areas. I know that there's not a week goes by <laughs> that I don't search my heart constantly to make sure that I'm not picking up something because it, we can all fall prey to these things when they come our way. No one is exempt from it. We got to remember this though. The Lord said to me, he said, you are still my bride, the church. You are still my bride, even when you mess up. He says, I forgive you, for you are but mere men. He said, repent and turn from these areas. And because we are just mere men, we're humans and we, we do fall. In James 1, 6, it talks about, let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like the wave of the sea driven to and from, like the wind. And not let that man suppose that he'll receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. We want to be stable. We want to be stable in the Lord. We want to know that we're not foolish men. It says in Proverbs 19.3, uh, the foolish man, the foolishness of a man twists his ways and his heart frets against the Lord. Wow. We don't want to have any foolishness coming out of us. Paul was writing to the church um, in 1 Corinthians 11.17, and he's saying, uh, now in the giving of these instructions, do not praise, I do not praise you, since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. And I thought, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> and then in verse 18 he says, for first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear there are divisions among you. And in part, I, Paul, believe it. And in verse 31 of that same chapter, it says, For if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But we are chastened by the Lord. So we need to be sure that um, we judge ourselves and that we may not be condemned with the world. Because it talks about the rest. Paul writes, I will set in order when I come. Jesus is going to set in order a lot of things when he comes. <laughs> and there's a lot of belief uh, systems that have gotten skewed from what the word of God said because they added to and they took from. They took the parts they like and they kind of altered them to make them fit whatever they wanted. I think that's why there's so many denominations. I, I know when I first started learning about the, the church in the late 80s, um, I was given some kind of a chart about how the church was formed and how long and how all these denominations broke down and broke down and broke down. I would venture to say I have no clue how many there are today. But everybody that doesn't like what they're doing, they go out and start their own church, make their own doctrine, and they teach it the way they want to teach it. And oh my gosh, 
That's why the power of God in the church has diminished because there's so many people out there taking away what God has given us, which is the gift of giving us the ability to go and to set in order things that are wrong and to uh, study ourselves, to show ourselves approved, and to bow before the Lord and release anything that comes our way. Um, he says in Jude, uh, <clears throat> and I'm paraphrasing here, uh, mockers, sensual persons cause divisions, and grumblers and complainers. And then this is uh, another note it said, sensual persons will still be a part of the church. They were not only teaching false doctrine, but they were gathering around themselves a fraction within the church. Like a chorus spirit, which is an elitist group that were dis, uh, deceived into thinking that they were more spiritual. I see that happening in a lot of places. And uh, I, I remember a church I went to many years ago. Gosh, they would have these great services on Friday nights. And I used to like to go to them, but I kept seeing stuff that was a little funny and a little off base. And I kind of wondered about it. And um, if you start barking like a dog, uh, to me, I don't think that's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> when I start seeing you falling out in certain ways, I, I just can't see that's the Holy Spirit. So anyway, uh, <laughs> I, had to, I had to leave because I thought, you know, this is wrong. But I, I tried one more time. There was a lineup to get in the service one Friday night because they had some special prophets there and all kinds of people. And oh my goodness, and the people were falling out like they were drunk in the line waiting to get in hours before it started. And I had to go straight from work so I didn't have to drive all the way home. So I got there way too early. And I kept looking at all these people just acting like they were drunk. And I, I finally, I said, you know what? If you think that's the Holy Spirit, you're insulting him. Because you know what? He gave you that Holy Spirit so you could go out and minister to people and bring them in. And I don't think that's going to bring anyone in. You need to be careful and seek him. And I... I did it in love because I cared, because everywhere I went, these people, I would see them in different places. But we can get out of balance in the church if we don't stay in the doctrines of the church and stay in the Word to know what does the Word have to say. Um, it goes on to... I, I went two different directions this week because, frankly, I couldn't find my notes that God gave me uh, a month ago or two months ago to start for this message for tonight and then I found it and, and this is where the way he took me this last time he said the church is the bride of Christ and it's made up of many members from all walks of life you got different races creeds colors natural national origins religious beliefs and unbeliefs you've got different statuses you've got rich people and poor people and we as humans see people based on these differences instead of only two, like God says. There's just two categories. There's just two. There's believers and there's non-believers. You're either saved or you're not saved. You're either heaven-bound or you're hell-bound. And heaven-bound, of course, is eternal life. And it's eternal life with God. And otherwise, you've got eternal death. Of suffering and Lord knows I, I would not even want to spend one second in eternal damnation from the things that I've heard people talk about that had near-death experiences and went there and came back and it was like oh no way Jose do I want any of that <laughs> so we in the church also divide again into different groups we got the spiritual Christians and we got the carnal Christians We've got those that are worldly that haven't really understood yet. Um, and they may be babies. So we have baby Christians and mature Christians. We've also, uh, God has created each one of us as an individual. We all are individuals. So we need to not look at the differences in our peoples and individuals that, that we greet and we meet. 
but we need to know that we are all created by God for the same thing. And uh, I know we've been bringing this topic up a lot about love, but we need to remember that in Deuteronomy, way back at the beginning, um, in the Torah, it talks about he commanded us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind and with all your strength in another version and love your neighbor as yourself and then it goes on again in Matthew he t reminded us to love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your mind and with all your strength and uh, love your neighbor as yourself love one another love one another and the Lord the Lord is showing me how the church is the only love that's true everything else in love is um, based on feelings. And feelings will always set you astray if you live on feelings. But if you live on a love of God, knowing that God loves you, he created you, and he created you for a reason. He sent you here on earth for a purpose and for a destiny of something he's got for you to do for him. And we need to always remember that. I'm speaking now to some people that are out there listening. So I know that you're going to know some of this. But I just want to do a quick rendition of a simplicity that the Lord gave me about reaching some people. Because we're assuming that, like the pastor said the other day, he realized that one of the preachers on TV was explaining some of these Old Testament stories so that the congregation could understand when he got to the verses that he was going to talk about. And that is so true. So when I'm writing sometimes and I'm looking for a way to express myself to people who have never walked with the Lord, and they may be on the back side of the hills and haven't heard anything. They don't know anything about our verbiage, our language, our, the words that we use. We call it our jargon. They don't know what these things mean. And so we need to be very simple in our presentation to people so that people can all understand. I, I found many years ago when I first got into um, Sunday school classes at a, at a church that I attended, the, uh, the verbiage that was being taught was being taught by uh, um, I can't even think of the right word. <laughs> Doctors, lawyers, and people of high uh, vocabulary. That's the word I'm wanting. A lot of times the words they used, I didn't understand. Because I didn't have that vocabulary. I didn't have that kind of an education. My education is very simple. And if I use a $50 word, I call it. <laughs> I said, oh, that's a good $50 word for me <laughs> because evidently the Lord just taught me one. But I call $50 words the words I don't understand. <laughs> and uh, I do that because uh, I remember breaking down and crying in that Sunday school class because people were teaching things that I wanted to know about, but I couldn't understand them. I flat couldn't understand them. And so I asked the question, and then I was corrected in a bad way to let me know that that's what they just said. I didn't know that's what they just said. I had a simple language, and they had a language I didn't understand. So when we start talking about redemption, and we start talking about being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. They don't know what that means. They don't know what a lot of these things mean that we talk about. And we take for granted that everybody in the church knows what they are. Well, we don't know. There's a lot of people will come into the church and they're kind of hiding because maybe they haven't been in a church in their entire life. And maybe they want to come check it out and see what it is. Or maybe they have been somewhere and they didn't have the hunger yet and now they're ready. So if we can be simple with them and teach them simplicity, then I think more people will be open to looking at it. 
And that's Maryland's version, okay? <laughs> but I know we have a pastor that's highly educated. <laughs> and I haven't found you to preach big words, though. So I'm, <laughs> and I'm so thankful for that because I can understand you very well. The, the dialect, sometimes I said, what did he say? <laughs> I just love to tease him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say it this way the Lord God knew because he gave us a free will to choose when, when he created us that we would fail in this area long ago and on the way back, way back to the beginning of time at the creation of the first man which is Adam was the first man and the first woman Eve they disobeyed God First, the woman enticed the man to partake of the forbidden fruit, and he did. And therefore, uh, then the man blamed Adam. Uh, then the man, Adam, passed on the blame to Eve. And then Eve passed on the blame to the serpent. And therefore, a sin nature to lie was birthed in, in the people of God, the children of God that he created. And it was passed on to their children. And then the very first family inherited this sin nature and passed it on, on and on and on throughout history. And we can read that in the scriptures. Uh, it talks about it in Genesis uh, 2, verse 16 and 17. It talks about it in Genesis 8, 21, and Romans 5, 18, and, I mean 19, and in uh, Romans 7, 18 and 19. And God had a plan to save us for breaking the commandments that he gave us. And what was the command? That we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our soul. And we love one another. <clears throat> and so he had a, a way, uh, he was not willing that any should perish. So God gave us that scripture in Second Peter 3, 9. He said, you see, God was not willing that any should perish, that all would come to repentance. God wants every child that was born to come to a place and time in their life when they know that they're a sinner, they're doing things wrong and they're ready to change and we want to be the one to be there to help them to repent and get their life straightened out. In John 3 16, of course God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him, believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Um, I think people have a wrong attitude of God for some reason by thinking that God is coming down on them all the time, <laughs> telling you how bad you are, and God is never telling you how bad you are. He's telling you how much he loves you. And he's telling you, you shouldn't do that. He'll tell you in a loving manner what you're doing wrong. And it melts your heart because you know that what you just heard is truth. Truth will set you free. One word of truth in your life can change your whole life. And that happened to me back in my 30s. Somebody said a word to me that <clears throat> I would never repeat. But I do know it was truth. And when it hit me, it hit me like a lead balloon. I had become someone that I said I'd never become like. You never know when you cross the line and you become the person you think you'll never become. But it happens to people. But God is so merciful and he loves us so much that he'll deliver you from anything and everything that's afflicting you and causing you hurts and pains. He'll come in and he'll seal off those areas that were so bruised in your heart that every time you hear something or you see something, it recreates an opening of that wound. He'll come in and give you freedom in that area. He is our savior and this Savior, to those that don't know it, is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And we don't have a dead God, we've got a living God. 
We got a God that cares, and he lives with us every day. You and I need a Savior so that we can spend eternity with this living God in heaven, in everlasting life. Uh, I found it very sad when I heard there's a, there's a religion, I guess it's called a religion, <laughs> uh, that believes that when you die, there's no hereafter. And I thought, oh, how sad. They think this is it. They think this is it. And when I found out the lady who was my boss was one of these, man, I, I couldn't believe it. It hurt so bad to think that she thought that. And I talked with her and talked with her and talked with her. And she said, well, Marilyn, you believe the way you do and I believe the way I do. I said, I know, but I got I to gotta try to get you to understand this isn't all there is. This isn't all there is. And so my heart goes out with compassion when I hear somebody doesn't know the things that, that really, if they knew them, they would really change their ways. Uh, at the completion of Jesus' time here on earth, and he came here to show us the way. He came to give us his word, the anointed word that changes our souls. Because our souls are bound for hell if we're not changing our ways. And so his spirit will come in. Jesus was willing to be crucified for us and he died and he was buried. And on the third day he arose again. And now he's seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. you got to remember that he presented himself to many people after he arose from the dead. He went into the town in Jerusalem and, and, and Samaria, I think both. And he presented himself to many people who saw him after he arose from the dead. So that makes him the living God. He's not the God that came and went and is gone forevermore. But he is the, he is the God that has has uh, been raised to, to help you. And when this gospel is presented to someone, you, the, Ho the Holy Spirit at that time, will quicken in, in their hearts because God knows they have a desire to receive this message. He knows that every, every uh, child that's born has a need in their life that is like a hole in their heart that is looking for love in some way and they don't know how to find it, but the Holy Spirit will show up when you start speaking to those people about this desire to receive this message. And when you know this, and you believe this, and you ask for him, <clears throat> the Christ, Jesus, will come into your heart. And the Spirit of Jesus, known as the Holy Spirit, begins to transform you from a baby carnal Christian into a mature Christian. This only happens as you, as you read and study the word of God. If you never surrender to his will for your life, you'll always be wondering why all these things you hear about never happened. And that is so true. Uh, a lot of Christians haven't experienced yet or haven't seen the things that God has in store for them to see and witness uh, but you must choose to uh, surrender your life and take on the life of Christ and study as Jesus did. He went to the synagogues and he studied. And we must do the same thing. And that's why these uh, Sunday school classes are so important. It's to help those who have never read the Word of God know what the Word of God says and how to interpret some of these things. Fellowship with Jesus and ask him to fill you with his spirit to empower you with the ability to grow in Christ. Without the Holy Spirit, our words are almost meaningless because the Holy Spirit is the one that brings life to them. And so when you allow the Holy Spirit to use you, the Holy Spirit will get in and it'll bring life to your dead body. It'll bring life to a, a dead cell in your body or to a dead organ or whatever in your life needs fixing, <laughs> it'll bring life to it. We must have a teachable spirit of compassion for those who are still lost or may say that they have not come to the knowledge of Christ as you have. You know, there's a lot of people don't know who Christ is yet. They've heard of him, and they think, some people think Christ is their last, is it Jesus' last name. And it's not. <laughs> 
Jesus is the anointed one. He's the Christ. In Matthew 4, 23, Jesus went about Galilee teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and here healing all kinds of sickness and disease and torments and demon-possessed epileptics and paralytics. And we should also be doing the same. We as the body of Christ, uh, we should be doing this also. And he gave us the great commission, told us to go out and preach the gospel. But he said, what till you've been endued with power? And that power comes through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And once you've got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are now endued with power. But you still have to get in the Word to know what the Word says you can do so that your faith will rise up and then you'll have boldness to go out and speak. You can speak to that mountain, be thou removed and cast in the sea. If you doubt not in your heart, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible because God is faithful. He's looking for us to step out in faith and do what he's called us to do. So now, that all being said, establish you believe, you believe God. Resolve that first. There's a lot of people not believing God. They want to believe him, but they've got a lot of doubt. So you've got to establish that first, that you believe God. And that you've received salvation by faith, Right? And that you believe you're saved, right? You believe heaven is your eternal home that you're going to, right? <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> There's people out there that aren't sure. And I'll ask them, where are you going when you die? Oh, I don't know. You don't know? You want to know? You don't want to know where you should go. <laughs> you want to know where you're going to go if you don't know. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. Do you believe that, you got to ask them, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? <laughs> do you believe Jesus was sent to earth to offer himself as a sacrifice for your sins? That's the redemption plan. That's the Romans 3, 21 to 25. You know, a lot of people don't know that their sins have already been taken care of. But they must repent, which means turn from their ways. They must come to Christ and ask him to help them along this path. Live according to who you are. And it talks about that in 1 Corinthians six eleven. It says, but you were washed but you were sanct and you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Put off the old man and put on the new man. First, um, in Colossians 3, 9, and 11. And you know, that really means, take off this old man, sin nature. Take it off and put on the new man. Put on the Spirit of the living God. Be Christ-like. Walk in the Christ's ways. Walk in the, in the understanding of knowing you don't have to live as a sinner anymore. And if you are sin conscious, that's a spirit in itself is trying to condemn you. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. You're redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And it talks about that in Hebrews 9.12. And that scripture, I heard it, I think it was... I think it was this morning and I had to get out of bed and go find it because I said there's something about this scripture that um, blesses me in such a manner that I think that um, well Marilyn you know where Hebrews is <laughs> I love it <laughs> 9, 12. I want you to hear this. This is beautiful. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience 
from dead works to serve the living God. That scripture just radiated in me to cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. I believe there's a lot of people are unknowingly uh, got guilty consciences and they need to let go of those things and know that 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 is a that's a lie. And I, I got this word for somebody who's listening here. And it says, remember the Spirit of God says, I am a God of mercy and grace. That which you have thought were lies. To hinder the move of the Spirit in your life. But I have washed you and you are clean, pure, holy, and ready to go forth. Be ready in season because that day is approaching quickly. That word is for someone here. And I said, Lord, I'll take that one for myself if nobody else claims it. <laughs> you know, I love how God will give me nuggets. Um, and I've got, to, I've got to throw the one I got out yesterday that is so beautiful. <clears throat> this friend of mine who comes over, and we do a lot of Bible study together, her and I, we were talking about Abraham being 90 when he went into ministry and, and Sarah and they went out and, and we were talking about how it doesn't matter how old you are and she's over the hill like me. <laughs> I said, so it doesn't matter how old you are, God can use you. And I said, just like it doesn't matter how young you are. I said, look at the king, jo Josiah. He was eight years old and he was made king. And I thought to myself, okay, you've got an eight-year-old, you've got a 90-year-old. Looky here. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord just moved on me. And he said, my spirit has no time limits. It's ageless. I am ageless. So I can work through an eight-year-old. I can work through a 90-year-old. I can work through that donkey that turned around and spoke to that man. <laughs> so that, that was a nugget that's free <laughs> that I just got yesterday. And I said, that is so beautiful. I, I love it. I love it because God is a God of mercy and of grace. Uh, I'm going to really skip ahead to a lot of things that uh, I don't think I'm going to cover. In the Passion Bible, uh, it says, God promotes judgment on unbelievers. That's his responsibility. But those inside the church family are our responsibility to discern and to judge. So it is your duty to remove that wicked one from among you. But we've got to remember, believers who claim that they're Christians and they're still disobeying, they're still not following God's ways, we need to help them. We need to help them so that they don't uh, allow them to be pulled back into the world permanently. And also so that we don't start hanging out with them and we become enticed to go back into the world where God has brought you out of. And a lot of times people accidentally do that and they don't mean to, but they catch themselves walking away from the church and going back into sin because somebody enticed them to go and they went. They thought, oh, it won't hurt. And, and no, it doesn't hurt to go once. But you know what? That's a setup. That's a setup. So we must know that we're being set up. And because of all that, I want to go one more place here uh, about stewards. We are, we are all stewards for the Lord. And uh, a steward is someone who looks after another's property or operation. We're a steward for the Lord Jesus Christ in the church. Uh, we're a steward to bring forth the things that he wants brought forth. And it says uh, here in 1 Corinthians 4, 3 and 5, But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself, Paul wrote, for I know of nothing against myself. Yet I am justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. 
Therefore, judge nothing before it's time until the Lord comes, who will bring both, uh, will bring, will both bring to light and the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. God wants us to not judge one another. Remember, he's our judge. And uh, if we see somebody struggling, uh, we need to help them because God has a plan that everyone would come to the saving salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ and cleanse their ways from dead works and cleanse their hearts and minds and be renewed by the Holy Spirit. So, Father, I, I pray that the church read these scriptures that Paul wrote and warned us about. And he gave us warnings throughout scripture, Father God. Lord, I had so many, but I didn't, I didn't feel led to, to bring all of these things because, Lord, it's not in our church, these divisions and these things that are happening. I just don't see it here. But, Father, if there is any, Father God, let us come to you and, and study on these scriptures, Father God, and be free from these areas because, Father, we don't want anything to negate the growth of the church and bringing people to Christ. We thank you, Father, that we have a church that is blessed, full of the Holy Ghost, and that, Father, we have love in our hearts for one another and love for the lost people. Lord, help us to help our brother when they're, they've lost their way. Help us to be concerned enough to walk in the compassion that you have for them. And let us not judge, but let you be our judge, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.